Climate change is a global phenomenon which will affect every country on Earth, and in fact, it already does so. But not only the impacts, also the causes of climate change are a global problem and can only be solved if all countries act together, bold and quick enough. The UNFCCC is the global framework under which they do so, or at least they should do so. In this short video, we explain you all you need to know about the UNFCCC, what it is, who's involved, what it aims to achieve, where it has succeeded so far, how it relates to COP, and what the outlook is going forward. At the end of the video, we'll give you some extra tips on how we all can take easy but effective action on climate change in general, so stick with us. Hi, I'm Bjorn from Climate Education. We produce videos where we inform you about climate change and sustainability and empower you to stop the climate crisis. We will now explain the main points of the UNFCCC, what it is, why we have it, and what it aims to achieve. So, what is the UNFCCC? The UNFCCC stands for United Nations Framework on Convention on Climate Change. It sets the framework for what the countries of the world have agreed on and are aiming at in terms of climate change action. The UNFCCC is one of the three multilateral environmental treaties which was signed in 1992 at the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil ratified by 190 70 countries and implemented in 1994. In joining the convention, countries acknowledge the existence of the threat of climate change and agree to undertake efforts to combat it. So what are the objectives of the UNFCCC? The UNFCCC has basically one big goal, and that is to stop climate change, or how they frame it, stabilization of greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere at a level that would prevent dangerous anthropogenic interference with the climate system within a time frame that allows people to, and the planet to adapt and economies to develop sustainability. So far, so good. But what does this mean in detail? In fact, the convention itself has not established concrete targets. Rather, it was intended to provide a framework for future agreements and policies. Two of such agreements are the Kyoto Protocol and the Paris Agreement, both significant milestones where the international community, or better to say the leaders of the countries of the world, have agreed to Pacific targets. The Paris Agreement, for example, aims at limiting global warming to under 2 degrees and calls on the parties to strengthen efforts to limit it to 1.5 degrees. These agreements have been negotiated by the annual meetings of the parties to the UNFCCC, which go under the name of COP. COP stands for the Conference of the Parties. If you want to know more about COP, you can watch our video where we discuss in detail everything you need to know about COP. So where does the UNFCCC see the main responsibility to solve climate change? Well, almost all countries have signed on to the UNFCCC and to the Paris Agreement as well, and climate change is a global problem. So, of course, all countries bear some responsibility. However, this doesn't mean that their level of responsibility is totally equal. In fact, the Convention recognizes the principle of common but differentiated responsibility and respected, uh, respective capability. This principle acknowledges that different states have different capabilities and, and responsibilities to address climate change. Some can and should do more than others. Simply put, the more emissions a country has produced and the more developed or wealthier it is, the more it's supposed to contribute to solving a climate crisis. That sounds fair, right? There's only a limited amount of greenhouse gas emissions that can be put into the atmosphere and be able to stay below 2 degrees of warming, let alone 1.5 degrees. This is often called the carbon budget. And developed nations have used up a lot of this budget already. That's how they got their industries going. Think of it like a pie where only a few crumbles are left as the wealthy have eaten almost all of it already. The poorer nations who haven't eaten yet should have the right to eat as well, or better to say, to develop as well. Just as the cake or greenhouse gas emissions are unhealthy, it is the duty of the developed nations to support poorer ones to develop sustainability. 
how effective has the UNF C been so far? Well, yes. First of all, it is important to acknowledge that getting almost 200 countries to agree on anything is a huge success. The UNF C has helped to put climate change on the international agenda. Its in annual COP meetings help to put the spotlight on the issue regularly. The Paris Agreement is an amazing milestone and the world leaders have agreed to limit global warming to 2 degrees and strive for 1.5 degrees. Carbon neutrality is aimed for globally by 2050. All this is great. But there has also been a lot of criticism. There are several reasons, but the main point here to make is that emissions have continued to rise. This contradicts any of the goals we've just mentioned. How are we supposed to get to zero emissions if we don't reduce them at some point? And the longer we wait, the harder this will become. Very soon, we will have to make the debate whether the goals that were set are even possible anymore to achieve. Astoundingly enough, there has been no language of a fossil fuel phase out in any of the agreements or declarations at any of the COPs. The main reason here is that certain states, countries, whose economies are heavily dependent on the export of fossil fuels have been blocking such language, such language exercising their power as all countries need to come to one agreement. So what's next? What's next for the UNFCCC? Not all is lost yet, and there is still the possibility to achieve the goal set. It is simply a matter of speed of action, and this one depends on political will. The technologies that we need for the transition away from fossil fuels and towards renewable energy already exist, and there has never been as much wealth on Earth accumulated as of today. We just need to get our leaders at COP to act boldly and quickly enough. The next COPs will be crucial to answer the question whether the goals of the UNFCCC will be achieved or not. The next conference of the parties will be held 2024 in Azerbaijan. At COP29, the governments will need to work toward a new financial goal for climate action, and wealthier countries will have to support climate action in less wealthy nations. So what can we all do? The UNFCCC has had little progress, but obviously not nearly as quick and bold enough as we needed to prevent further dangerous, dangerous climate change. While some question whether the UNFCCC's format of COP still makes sense, it's hard to see a realistic alternative that might work better in its place. So the big question actually is, what can we all do to get the leaders of the world to do the right thing and face out fossil fuels with the speed that we need them to? Of course, only few of us will ever attend COP, but if you, do, you don't need to, to do that, to put pressure on your political leaders or on banks and corporations. It comes down to making your voice heard. Easier said than done, but here are some ways how to do it. Think about two things when it comes to climate change. First, why do you care about climate change? And second, what do you want the others to do about it? This will be what we call your story about climate change. Now, tell your story to those who can make the big change, such as the leaders at COP. You can do this, for example, by taking them on social media, writing their office an email or a letter. This can be really short and really only needs to focus on the two questions we just mentioned. Just make sure, if you do so, to give, it, to give your message a personal note. That's really it. So your story could sound, for example, something like, this. I'm a father of two young children and I'm worried about the future because climate change will threaten their health and their lives through extreme weather events such as heat waves and drought. I therefore urge you to call on the leaders of the world at COP to commit to a swift phase out of fossil fuels. Thank you. Of course, you can also start by simply having a small conversation with a friend about climate change at your workplace or at school or so. Every small action counts, and as long as the topic of climate change is being discussed, it will eventually contribute to creating pressure for the change that we all want to see. So, thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe, as it really helps us to increase the visibility for this channel and get more people on board to fight the climate crisis. Big thanks from us in advance, and see you in the next video.